Hey, it's Rob from The Master Switch. Home theater can be intimidating, and no more so than when it comes to the receiver, the big, bad center of your home theater with all its zillions of ports on the back and millions of options. And if you don't know what you're doing or if you're new into the business, it can get pretty scary pretty quickly. Uh, it certainly was like that for me. Fortunately, I've been doing this for a little while. I've learned a couple things. So what we're gonna do in this little explainer video as quickly and clearly as we possibly can, we are going to flip around this beast, the Marantz SR70, and show you what all the different ports on the back do. We're gonna break down everything you can plug into a home theater receiver and uh, everything that uh, each one of those ports does. Now, this one, uh, the Marantz SR7011, is probably a little bit overkill for most people. It's a beast of a machine, 11.2 channel, but uh, one thing it does have is every single type of port on the back. So it's a great one to use for a video like this because you'll be able to see absolutely everything. Now, as I said, I'm gonna do this as quickly and clearly as possible. I'm not gonna spend too much time on each individual port. If you want a more full explanation, we've done a full explainer piece at themasterswitch.com. The link is in the description. This is the back of the unit, and as you can see, it's a monster. There are dozens of ports and connections there and uh, it can be crazy confusing, especially when you consider that uh, the manual for most of these things, including, it must be said, this particular unit, uh, isn't all that good. It can sometimes be a little bit hard to figure out. Fortunately, here's the good news. Uh, for most people, you are only ever gonna have to worry about one or two sections, and those are the ones I'm gonna go into first. The first one is the most important. In this case, it's running along the bottom. It is the speaker section. This is where you connect all your home theater speakers, and doing so is very easy. You you use, very simple, speaker wire. You connect the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative, positive is red, negative is black, and boom, your speakers will work. Really, it is that simple. And in most cases, including here, everything is clearly labeled. As you can see, we've got the front left and the front right speakers right here, the center speaker alongside it. And uh, really, all you've got to do is just, uh, connect, is just connect them up. Now, the one exception is the subwoofer. We'll be talking about that in a bit. You will not see it uh, on this bottom section. The second section you need to worry about runs along the top of this particular unit, the HDMI in and the HDMI out section. HDMI cables are the kind of the industry standard way of connecting different bits of AV equipment together. Let's say, for example, you have an Xbox One and uh, you want to connect it to the receiver and then connect the receiver to the TV. What you do is you take an HDMI cable, run it from the back of your Xbox One into one of these HDMI slots here. You could, you could technically run it into any one of them. They're all created equal. However, I suggest using the one actually labeled game because when you're going through the on-screen menus when you're setting up your receiver it'll make your life a little bit easier. Once you've done that you take an HDMI cable run it from the HDMI out section of your receiver probably the big one labeled monitor one and you run it into the back of your TV and boom you should be good to go in theory. Uh, for 90% of people the speaker section and the HDMI section are probably the only ones you will actually need. Well you, you'll need the power cable right here but we think I think you can probably figure that one out on your own. But just in case uh, you have stuff that doesn't use HDMI cables what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the other ports on the back of this unit, uh, which are less common, but still worth knowing about. Take a look at this multicolored middle section. Some TVs do not have HDMI, especially some older ones. And when they don't have HDMI, this is what you'll be using to connect them. Uh, you will need to connect them using a video cable or a component video cable. So what you do is you'd, uh, you'd run a video cable uh, from say a Blu-ray player into the video in slot, and then run another one from the video out slot into your TV. Ditto for the component video in and component video out. Component cables are another bit of technology that splits uh, the visual signal into three separate color areas. Uh, and now we're talking seriously ancient technology and please just get an HDTV because it will make your life a lot easier. The one thing is if you're doing it this way, audio has to be run from a separate cable, which is why we have this separate audio in section here. Exactly the same principle. You just run the, you just run the audio in straight from your Blu-ray player or whatever you're using that you, does not use HDTV. HDMI. There are a couple of additional sections that run alongside those audio ins. The first is 7.1 channel in. Now, some Blu-ray or DVD players actually offer surround sound built in, and if that's the case, they will have multiple connections running off them to allow you to experience really, really good sound direct from the playback source. That's what you put in here. You'd simply connect the Blu-ray or DVD player up to the 7.1 channel in outputs. Running alongside it, and this one is kind of important, is the pre-out, the pre-amp out. Sometimes, you have equipment like a subwoofer, which doesn't require external amplification. They've got their own apps built in. So if you had a subwoofer, see those little black things at the bottom there? You would plug it straight 
into there. And ditto for any other speakers that had their own apps built in. Again, these are outside of the subwoofer. These are sections that you probably won't have to worry about unless you've got specific uh, specific equipment, but still it's good to know what they all do. Okay, that covers the main ports. Now we're onto the slightly weirder sections. These are the things on the side that look very strange, are labeled weirdly, and you probably don't know what they do, but fortunately they're actually quite easy to figure out. Let's start with a simple one, Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna. It's uh, dead simple. Most AV receivers will have a little antenna that you screw on that allows you to connect to your home Wi-Fi network or stream over Bluetooth. You just screw it right on, it works straight away. If your Wi-Fi is a little bit sketchy, well, here's a network port for an ethernet cable connected directly to your router and you will have uninterrupted internet. Let's talk about this one, the digital audio in. Now let's say your TV is making sound in addition to your Xbox. If for example, you're watching a streaming service that is connected directly through your TV, you're watching Netflix, you're watching NBA League Pass and you need to send sound from your TV to your receiver. If it's connected via HDMI, uh, it will almost certainly have something called ARC, audio return channel, which means it's capable of sending sound directly back to the receiver. But some TVs do not have ARC and you need to check your TV to make sure it does. If it doesn't have ARC, it'll be able to transmit uh, video through HDMI quite happily, but it won't be able to transmit audio and that's where this section comes in. You would use either a coax cable or an optical cable to connect your TV to uh, the receiver and thereby you'd be able to get sound out of it. Again, most people probably won't have to use this, but it is good to know about all the same. Uh, antenna, Dead simple, you just connect an AM or an FM antenna. In, in this, in the case of the Marantz, it actually came with one that allows you to listen to the radio if listening to the radio through a $2,000 receiver is something you enjoy. DC out, very, very clever. That allows you to essentially control another piece of equipment through your receiver. If, for example, you have a projection screen and you want it to automatically lower every time you turn your receiver on, that's what you use the DC out for. Straight cable RS232C, now this can be really puzzling especially if you've never seen it before I actually had to look this one up this one is quite obscure essentially if you have a, uh, a PC or an external controller like a mouse or whatever you would connect it using this it's one of the few ports on the back that doesn't transmit audio or video but you use it for home automation now we're getting into kind of seriously custom stuff and you shouldn't have to stress too much about this one unless you have uh, an external controller a couple more here the flasher and the remote control, these are for connecting external remotes. If you don't like the remote your receiver comes from, or you've had to stash it in the cupboard and you need to use a remote extender, that's what you'd use to plug in. Uh, the signal ground, specifically for turntables. Turntables uh, need to have a ground wire, otherwise they make a nasty little humming noise. That's what you'd use this one for. If you don't have a turntable, you can quite happily ignore it and never pay any attention to it at all. And that's it, I've tried to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, if you'd like a more full explanation, as I said, there is a full piece. Link is in the description. You can take as much time as you need and uh, check out a much more in-depth explanation right there. I'm Rob. This has been The Master Switch. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.